How's it going everybody? Combo here. Today we got five quick tips with the Pyronade. This is by far the most used lethal gadget in the game. I feel like I can say that with confidence, mostly because it comes down to like, this thing doesn't take a whole lot of understanding, right? It's pretty user friendly. It does a lot of damage. It's also very multifaceted. However, you know, we don't like simplicity. We like to explore things and figure out how to use them at the highest level. Hence why I hope you clicked on this video. Besides the point, right? I'm not here to yap. I'm here to show you how to get it done. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Starting things out at number one, we have the Flame Floor. Now this is one of my favorite techs in all the finals for three reasons. One, it counters APS turrets. Two, it counters gas without you actually having to be in the same room. And three, it pairs very well with the Sonar Nade and allows you to hit people through walls while also seeing them through walls. So it's really cool. This is exactly how it sounds. All we're gonna do is take our Pyro Grenade, chuck it at the ceiling and damage people. Something to note, um, this will not work if the floor is too thick. My rule of thumb is if you can use a dematerializer to basically go through the floor, this technique will work. As I showed off on the light build, you do have access to sonar nades, which pairs very good with this. So if I throw down the sonar nade, as you can see, I can actually find targets. So I see, oh, there's a guy right there. I'm gonna throw it at the ceiling underneath him. And as you'll see, he actually starts taking damage. As I also said, even though I threw that from the floor beneath, if I throw a gas grenade, for example, that fire will actually get rid of that gas as well. So this is a very powerful technique definitely if you take nothing away from this video other than this that's fine a lot of people don't know it exists hopefully they don't patch it um, because I'm putting this out there but once again very powerful definitely give it a try next up at number two we have the flame spreader so let's say you really want to get the bang for your buck with that pyronade because you only get one and it's kind of on a long cooldown well guess what's not on a long cooldown you got it, goo grenades. These have a very fast uptime, and they just so happen to synergize very well with the pyronade. So all you're gonna do for this technique, and by the way, this also works with the goo gun, you're gonna take your goo nades, you're gonna chuck them out, right? You can chuck the goo nades first if you want, then you're simply gonna follow up with that pyronade. And as you'll see, that pyro spreads to that goo. Once again, if you wanna use the goo gun as well, you can spread even more flames and basically make that one pyronade last a very long time and cover a ton of area i highly recommend you try this in um like small buildings because you can very quickly overwhelm your enemy as i said too if you don't want to throw those goo nades first right like you don't want to give away what you're doing you can also throw down that pyro nade first then throw the goo so you can spread it in that manner there's a lot of freedom with this as you can see i can throw that second one there then add goo however you want to do it regardless though it's super powerful and it also works on every build which is uh really cool Next up at number three, we have a do not. This is a mistake I see all too common. I want to bring it up because it really does affect gameplay and it makes your pyro grenade experience much more inconsistent. So what I will see a lot is somebody will see a target, right? Like this light over here, he's on a ledge and they'll try to throw it and hit the guy directly, right? And I understand if you hit them directly, they are exactly in the center of your fire radius and they're going to take a bunch of damage. But as you'll see here, if I miss, it's gone. Now I do no damage and I have no chance of damaging that target. All I'm telling you to do is aim approximate in an area where that radius, AKA the splash on the pyro is gonna hit them. So rather than aim directly at somebody, I'm saying aim for their feet, aim close to them. Cause once again, same thing here, if I miss this target, my pyro goes all the way past him and it does no damage. Whereas on the inverse, right? If I know I wanna hit this target and I throw it close to him on the floor, right? I might not do the maximum 100% damage, but at a minimum, I know I'm gonna hit that target. So please going forward, when you're throwing those pyro nades, I know you wanna chuck them and hit people in the face, but understand there is no impact damage with the pyro nade, so go for consistency over trying to BM people. Next up at number four, we have environment flames. I'll try to keep this one uh, pretty short just because I feel like a lot of people are aware of this, but I still think it's important when you're talking about something that catches things on fire. So in the finals, especially on maps like Kyoto, um, basically any map that has a lot of trees, right? Certain parts of every map for the most part has some kind of vegetation. Pyronades can be a blessing and a curse. So for example, here in the practice range, there are a lot of trees. Understand, you know, the devs over at Embark did a very good job. So when you, uh, when you throw fire at trees, they catch on fire. And you can use this to your advantage, right? Let's say I wanna hit this target in the back here and I'm a little bit far off. If I hit this tree, as you see, 
all the trees around it, all this greenery is going to catch on fire. And if I go near them, I'm actually going to take damage from that tree, even though it's not necessarily where my grenade landed. So understand that you can use the vegetation near where your grenade landed to do that extra damage. On the downside, as you can see, that will break cover, right? Also, at the same time, if it's a building you need to go into and there's a lot of trees in that area, understand that if I throw that pyronade, right, and I'm trying to run in here, there's a good chance I get set on fire in the process. So please understand that, yes, you can catch things on fire and do a ton of damage to the environment. As you can see, the radius on this is, uh, is quite large, you know what I mean? And people are going to take damage from those burning obstacles. But at the same time, be aware, uh, when you chuck that nade, sometimes you also have to go through that environment, so just be cautious. And finally, at number five, we have build synergies. I did one for every build. I'm sure there's more, but for the sake of time, I don't wanna do a bunch. So if I miss something, please let me know in the comment section down below. However though, starting with the heavy, as I mentioned in tip number three, you don't wanna always chuck the pyronade right at somebody like directly, because if you miss, it's gonna be really bad. Sometimes though, you might undershoot. However, this can actually be to your advantage. If you have the winch claw and you throw the pyro too short, you can actually pull a target right in front of you. And as you know, when you pull something with the winch claw, it's not going to pull the person right in front of your face, right? They're gonna be about five meters from you. And when you put down that pyro nade and use that winch claw to pull them, you can actually pull them directly into that fire and they take a ton of damage. So definitely give that a try. The next one we have here is on the light build. This is one of my favorite things, especially because, you know, I really want the smoke grenades to be good and I finally found a use for them. So let's say, for example, you're getting chased by somebody. What the pyronade also does very well at is blocking doorways. So if I'm getting chased right here, right, and I put that down, other than if they want to break down that wall, they have to take damage to go through it. But let's say I need to go through that door now, like somebody's coming over here. All I have to do is drop down a smoke nade, and now I have access to that doorway. So just carrying smokes in your back pocket can allow you to block off a doorway and then immediately open it back up, which is a lot more powerful than you might think. And then finally for the medium build, this is one of my favorites, right? A lot of the time you like to place your turret in a choke area, AKA a place where you know, you're blocking out a doorway or trying to deny movement. However, sometimes people can get close to your turret or maybe you wanna throw a pyro grenade into that doorway too, but you don't wanna damage your turret. Basically what I'm trying to get out here is your guardian turret is um, actually fireproof. So if I have this turret right here and I'm trying to damage somebody, but I don't want to hurt my turret, all I'm going to do is chuck my pyronade. As you can see right here, for some reason, uh, my turret takes no fire damage. So what I'm trying to tell you here is if your turret is in the way and you just so happen to have a pyronade and you really want to throw it somewhere, uh, don't be worried because apparently uh, turrets in the finals don't really care about fire. So yeah, there's that. Anyways, everyone, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I tried to keep this video brief while also um, giving as much input as I can on this gadget. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I missed though, especially because basically everybody uses the pyro. So I'm sure there's a bunch of tech that I have no clue that, you know, it exists. So please, once again, um, I'm all about being humble. Let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know if you thought this was a uh, BS and filler. You know, that's fine. I'm always trying to improve, so please let me know. Anyways, everyone, I'm not trying to talk in the outro forever. Thank you so much for the support recently on the videos, especially my last one. If you haven't watched that, go check it out. We're uh, analyzing throwing knives. It's super, super cool. And we actually got some comments from the animation and sound team over at Embark. Really, really cool stuff. Thank you for commenting, guys. Anyways, this has been Combo. Thank you so much for coming and watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.